We all agree that having a right roadmap will help you learn things faster. This is the 7 days roadmap for a React developer. No matter you are a beginner or advanced developer, this is the roadmap which you have to follow to understand React and start building your application. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete overview that what are the things you have to learn in terms of data rendering, component structure, API calls, router, hooks. That's all we're going to discuss about it. And I have tried to keep only those things which are important, which you have to know as a beginner if you are starting to learn React. So before I start, let me tell you what React is. For those of you who don't know, React is a JavaScript framework which allows you to build your web application. You can break down your entire application into a small component and it has some powerful hooks which you can use it to pass the data, make an API call, a lot of things you can do very easily. The entire roadmap are divided in following modules. So the first module will have a CLI tool. The second module will have component. The third module will have rendering. The fourth module will have hooks. The fifth module will have router. The sixth module will have state management. The seventh module will have styling. The eighth model will have API calls, the ninth model will have testing and the 10th model will have framework and the 11th model will have forms and now comes the last model which is a mobile application. So you can easily use this framework to build your mobile application as well. CLI tools are nothing but a React environment which allow you to create React application under a specific environment and each environment has a specific folder and file structure, optimization and speed. The most popular one we have is Wheat and the second popular we have is Create React App. You can pick any one out of this and the second module will have its component. Component is a very powerful concept in React.js which allow you to break down the entire application into a small components. So when it comes to component, we have a couple of methods. We have class components, we have functional based components. So if you haven't heard about it this before, make sure to follow my complete project where we have built NFT marketplace and all the pro those projects which we have used to build our application. So in that I have used class component as well and we have used the functional based component as well. Now let's come to the some common basic component structures. So in normal file extension, we type JS or we create HTML. But when it's come to React, it follow a specific extensions called JSX. So if you want to create any component in your React application, this is the JSX extension you have will use. You will give the name of your component and you will use JSX. And we have props versus states, we have conditional rendering, we have composition. So these are the couple of things we have under the component which you can utilize to build your application. So make sure you have to know each one of these that what is JSX, what is props versus state, what is traditional rendering and what is composition. Come back to the third model which is a rendering and there are a couple of things which you have to know and you have to learn. So the first one we have in the list is component lifecycle. So when you are rendering any component, what is the life cycle of the component? How it's going to trigger when the application is going to render? So you have to know about it. The second one we have is the list and the key. So in React, we have a reusable component structure. You don't need to write the entire code over and over again. If you have the similar structure, you can give use it as a list and you can provide a unique key. So you have to know about it, that what is list and what is unique key. You have to know that how you can render the props, how you can pass the data into one component to another component. You can have to know that how, how you can use the riffs, how you have to use the events, how you have to use the high order components. So these are the couple of things you have to know when it's come to rendering the component because this is the component structure we're going to follow over and over again when you will build an application. So that's the third module. The fourth module we'll have is hook. Hooks are very important concept in React and which takes most of your burden away from you when you will start building the application and managing the state in the entire application so there are a couple of things we have to know about it so we have basic hooks under the basics hooks comes the use state and use effect so these are the most common hook you will find in the application when you are building your application using react.js because sometimes you have to create the state management of your application like you have created a variable and you have to share that variable into an entire application and that's you can do it very easily by using the state hook if you really want to call your function like based on the 
based on the user click or based on the page reload this use effect is going to help you a lot so again i'm telling you if you haven't watched the nft marketplace project make sure to watch it and that i have explained every single thing about this hooks and we have utilized this hooks extensively now we have the sub category of this hook section that writing custom hook so we have heard about this basic hook now we have also writing custom hook under the writing custom hook we have some common hook like use callback use ref use memo use reducer use context and you can create your own custom ones so these are the couple of hooks which is really mandatory for all of you to know about it that what it does because you're going to use it a lot when you will work with the data when you're going to fetch the data from the api and when you want to display on the application based on the user interface in that context you're going to use this common hooks and you will create your own custom hooks based on the user experience okay routing is also a very important concept which you have to know about it because react follow a different routing structure next js follow a different writing structure typescript follow the next different writing structure but they all come from the same branch which is the react js okay so under the react js we have two different methods like react routers and rich router so you have to know that how you have to use the react router for going from one page to another page and you have to know that how you can use this rich router so these are the important concepts you have to get clear because when you will sit for the interview definitely they're going to ask you for this concept that what is rich router what is react router come to the fifth model which is a state management so when you will build your application you have to manage the entire data which you want to share in your application in that context we have to use the proper state management structure so we have a lot of tools which allow us to do that some of the populars are recallic mobix redux toolkit this one is the most demandable tool when it's come to managing the state so make sure to know about it we have just stand and context context is an inbuilt feature of react js which allow you to manage the state but when you are building a small application in that you can use this context structure but when you are building an application like e-commerce store or bigger marketplace in that context redux is the most preferred one and many industries want you to have this redux tool mastery so you can use that in the project so for a small project you can use context but for bigger project you have to use the redux toolkit now let's come to the sixth module which is a styling so you have to know that how the styling of the component of the of the ui part take place in the react js so under the styling we have two methods to style our components the first one we have is using the libraries so one of the popular library we have right now is the motion so you can simply use the library to bring the component and bring the styling to your component now we have the style component so under the style component it's a kind of library which you also use it to build your application so this is the popular library which you can use for building any component but you also have some plugin some tools for doing the styling without writing any custom styling like in that comes the tailwind material ui maintain chakra ui so these are the popular tools you will find they will provide you the component as well as the css classes which you can put and you will have the styling so these are the tailwind is really popular material ui is also popular and chakra ui is also popular so they will come with pre-built component which you can utilize it with the pre-built styling and they have amazing documentation which you can follow and the last one we have under the styling is CSS module so sometimes what happened that you don't want to utilize it any libraries or any any tools for bringing the functionality bringing the style into your component you can create your own by using the css module so you have to know that how you have to create the css module what is the structure you have to follow how you have to give the file extension how you have to import that so these are the things you should have to know if you are building your application using react the module will have is called api call so when you are building an application if you are using any third party api to fetch the data and render the data then you have to know that how you have to make the api calls what are the options you will have what are the popular apis are there which you can utilize in your project and how you can utilize it in the react js so there are a couple of popular like api examples are given here like apollo railway graphql if you don't know GraphQL, it's a powerful API structure which you can utilize it to fetch the data. And come to REST API, we have some popular tool which allow us to make an API request. Like we have SWR, React Query, XCS. XCS is so powerful, and I have used extensively in most of my project. Now we have this RTK Query. Is all these are the things which you have to know when you are making an api call so the most important thing i want to highlight under the api is the xcs rtk query and react query so these are the thing you have to know when you are making an api call and how you can do that let's come to the eighth module which is a testing and testing has two different modules in the first module we'll have just 
VS test and react testing library. So when you are building an application and you want to test it, you can use this tool to check the performance of your application. And on the other hand, you will have like compress and play right. So this is also a tool which allow you to do the testing. So you have to know that how you have to utilize this when you will deploy a application for a production you have to make all the things work properly that you whatever api calls you are making it's proper it's secure and it's not creating too much pressure on the component which you have built so you have to optimize every single thing using this library so that's the eight now that's the only thing you have to know when it's come to testing your application now let's move to the ninth model which is a framework so here we are highlighting two framework one is remix and the next one is next.js these two these two frameworks are built in JavaScript, has the same similar structure like React.js and we can utilize to build your application. So whatever we have learned so far, you're going to follow the same structure, same state management to build your application. But React and Next.js has commonality, but Next.js is more powerful or Next.js and I want to add one more, which is a TypeScript. TypeScript is also very popular in certain applications, so you can learn about it. Now let's talk about the tenth model we have called forms. Forms are very important because sometimes you're going to take certain data from your application and you're going to send that to a backend. So what are the forms option you will have which you're going to add in your application? So here there are a couple of examples which you can follow, and you have to know because sometimes the clients or the company which you will work for they're going to ask you to choose anyone from. Maybe this list will grow in number. But for the time being right now, that moment we are recording, this is the most popular one, which I'm highlighting here. So the first one we have is React hook form. You have to know how it's work. The second one we have is formic, how it's work. Final form, under that forms, we have more like component, but there are more which you have to know. Like you have to know that what is suspension, what is protos, what is error boundary in the component, in the structure, what is fiber architecture, what is advanced topic. So all of the things you have to know about React.js, once you're done with entire thing, you are almost ready to build any kind of web app using React.js. So once you master the entire technology, whatever topics we have covered so far into this application, and it's not going to take more than seven days if your JavaScript foundation is clear. So if you are good in JavaScript, you can easily able to master each one of these in seven days. And that's my guarantee if your JavaScript fundamental is clear. So in the next video, I will make a tutorial that what are the things you have to know about JavaScript before you learn any framework or any programming language. Because JavaScript is the most popular language right now for the web. You can not only build web application, you can build backend, you can build like tools, softwares. You can also build mobile application using the React Native and that's what I'm going to talk about. So once you, talk, once you learn about React.js, now the next step comes that to learn React Native. So React Native is a JavaScript framework which allow you to write mobile applications. So JavaScript is so popular. You can use it in every single kind of tool, software, and application which you can imagine to build. So once you're done with this entire React.js, I would suggest you to go with React Native, learn about it, that what is the framework which you have to use to build React Native mobile. And I'm going to make a tutorial on this, that what are the structure which you have to know when it's come to learning the React Native roadmap. But before you learn any one of this, like React Nears, Next.js, TypeScript, you have to be good in JavaScript. So very soon I'm going to build a tutorial where I will explain you that what are things you have to know. The important things you have to know in JavaScript before you pursue and start learning about this framework. So that's the entire roadmap for React.js. I hope we have tried to cover every single important topic which you have to know. And uh, after that, it's all about learning, keep learning. So these are the basics and important things which you have to learn right for current demand. But new tools, new technology will keep adding in each of these modules. So you have to keep yourself updated and you have to learn from those tools. So I hope you guys have found this video valuable. If you still have any confusion, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. I'll try to cover that as well. And I hope this entire roadmap is helpful for you. I'm going to provide you the entire roadmap guide in the description so you guys can get it. And download it so that's the only thing i want to talk about hope you guys have found it video valuable if you still have any confusion in doubt do let me know in the comment section do let me know in the comment section see you in the next video have a wonderful day bye bye